I was recently made aware of a project called Blackbirds on Kickstarter. Powered by the Zweihand or Grimmin Perilous system, which I've already covered, it was billed as a tabletop role-playing game heavily inspired by Kentaro Miura's seminal manga Berserk. Upon looking at Blackbirds myself, I have to call that inspiration into question. But reflecting upon that, I began to ask myself, what would it be a good way to represent Berserk in tabletop RPG form? Now, of course, as with many things in my life and in my work, the answer is not exactly simple. Sure, you could probably say dark fantasy, but that would be a very surface-level adaptation. There's plenty of forms of dark fantasy, and not all of them are created equal. So in this musing, I will attempt to delve into the ways to do Berserk in TTRPG form, many of which aren't directly related to the system used, though some of them are. With that said, let's begin, shall we? There's a growing trend of folks who claim that the given game that they run can handle any fantasy game, or similar genre, depending on what you ask. Typically being some form of Dungeons and Dragons, new or old school. But unless they're talking about a universal-style game, I will always find these claims incredibly suspect. In a setting like Berserk, magic is not exactly integral the way it is in other fantasy settings, especially the most popular fantasy setting. It is certainly present, but I would hesitate to call it frequent, even at my most charitable. This is the problem when using something like Dungeons and Dragons, regardless of system, because magic is so integral to it from a setting and mechanical perspective. That's not to say you couldn't use a d20-based system, but the choice therein would have to be a bit more selective. If your group prefers Pathfinder-esque d20, or the d20 setup as it was in Dungeons and Dragons 3rd edition, I'd advise using Fantasy Craft. It's an extremely modular take on that rule set, and is designed so magic isn't necessary. Also, it has a good amount of crunch to make martial characters appear more interesting, especially with how it handles feats, which I've already covered in my review, so go check that if you want a bit more detail on why. If your group insists on using Pathfinder's rule set specifically, I'd recommend supplementing it with the Spheres and Power and Spheres of Might expansion from Drop Dead Studios. That particular expansion is a video all on its own, and trust me, that will be coming. But suffice to say, it provides a set of talent-based tools to allow for the type of spellcasting that would fit, as well as making martial characters not a one-size-fits-all approach. For those of you who are leaning a bit more into the 5th edition take on the D20 system, I'd recommend Shadow of the Demon Lord for somewhat similar reasons, just with a tighter grip on its already fairly tight spellcasting system. Now if your table insists on using something with 5e's mechanical framework, consider Brancolonia as a basis. I'll get into why later. When assembling your campaign as a GM, not only should you not tell them it's Berserk themed, don't tell them that it's even going to be dark fantasy. Tell your players that you're going to be playing something akin to historical fantasy. Bring up early Game of Thrones as a template if you have to. Then, over time, slowly start dipping into the fantastical stuff. A few demons here and there, perhaps a horror story or two here, and then drop the other shoe they so you can see what kind of nightmarish world they stepped into. In this regard, I think the Golden Age arc provides an effective template. It's also for this reason I'd recommend looking into something like Adventure Conqueror King's system if you want to build up something similar to the Band of the Hawk in the Golden Age, or the aforementioned Brand Colonia, since in that setting the player characters are knaves in a back-to-front version of medieval Italy. That might sound a bit strange given the more German influences of the setting of Midland, but that's something that can easily be amended by a canny GM. Escalation is a natural tool in storytelling, RPGs or otherwise, but I feel that just having characters get more powerful isn't quite enough. In addition to that whole more powerfulness, I think that changes within personalities, goals, and priorities should also occur with time. The best way to do this kind of thing is to take a far more hands-on approach with the players, to transition them into fully realized characters, instead of the murder-hobo stereotype that is sadly still relevant even these days. An easy way to get the ball rolling for the GM is to repeatedly ask some variation of why. Not with a direct yes or no answer, but just something to get the ball rolling. There's been a trend for the longest time of making sure encounters are balanced in one form or another. If you're running something Berserk-themed, this is something you're going to have to break away from. Encounters should be stacked against the players in one form or another. 
both to reinforce the setting and to ensure players can't try and brute force their way out of situations. It's also an effective way to encourage players to use their whole tool set. And the fact that sometimes surviving is as much of a victory as is routing the enemy typically is. Despite so many characters using similar weapons from an equipment list perspective, fights in Berserk are full of more than just basic attacks. In the same vein, I'd recommend either more detailed rules for combat maneuvers, or allow for some sort of stunt rule when it comes to how the player describes their actions. Or a little of column A and a little of column B. Obviously, looking at how action scenes are set up is prime research, but I feel that it's equally important for the GM to devise tactics on his end for the players to react to. If you need a more written bit of advice on this, I recommend a book called Blowing Up the Movies. Written by feng shui creator Robin D. Laws, it's an invaluable tool for looking at film and seeing what you can learn from it from a player and a GM perspective. Berserk is a setting that is not for the faint of heart. It's a terrible, terrible place filled with desperate people who are motivated by all manner of things, willing to do anything to accomplish their goals. This is something that should be made explicitly clear to the players, so that when the shit gets real threshold is crossed, it's not an act of frustration on the GM. I'd probably also advise them to make multiple character sheets if I was running things. You know, one, just in case, and two, it helps fit the passion play of this being a group setup. PCs are no exception to this notion of it being a terrible place to live, and because of that, it's important to hammer home from session zero that they may be just as ruthless in their own ambitions as anyone else. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world, and if you don't do whatever it takes, you won't come out ahead. With all that said, I want to put in perspective everything that I've said in the last few minutes towards my issues with Blackbirds presenting itself as Miura-inspired. But in order to do so, I need to bring up a small pet peeve of mine. Tangent warning. I've had an issue with certain animators claiming anime as an influence but only referencing things like the bike slide in Akira or the transformation sequence in Sailor Moon. My issue with these references is not their existence, but their intent. It's similar to why people hate all the myriad references seen in a Seltzer and Friedberg movie. They're there not because it fits the story, but for little more than their own sake. Oftentimes they're there to say to the audience, see, we're hip to the modern days too. But more often than not, this betrays a surface-level understanding of the anime and or manga that they're referencing, as if they only know the so-called cool parts and little else. I bring this up because I feel it encapsulates the issue I had reading up on Blackbirds' Kickstarter page. If this is inspired by Berserk, it's done so by the lens of someone who only read the Black Swordsman arc and nothing else. To be honest, I see more Souls-like DNA in this project than I do anything of Berserk. Which, of course, is its own can of worms as somebody who's dabbled in adapting it to tabletop and seen other people do the same. Berserk was certainly an influence on Dark Souls, no one will ever deny that, and Miyazaki himself has admitted as such. But the two of them operate on completely different wavelengths and context. Souls leans more into the theming of a decaying power and how people cope with that fact, especially the first Dark Souls, akin to the final days of the Roman Empire. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if Miyazaki read The Decline and Fall of the Roman Empire when developing Dark Souls, but obviously I can't confirm that. The key difference here is the understood scale. Dark Souls is not as personal as Berserk, and the focus instead is on the world and its past rather than the central character, obviously due to the fact that you're playing a nameless protagonist in the form of the chosen undead. Now, of course, that's a surface, surface level interpretation of Dark Souls, and there's plenty of videos by people like Vati Vidya that go a lot further than I'm going to in this particular affair. But I bring this up to demonstrate that just because one is inspired by the other doesn't mean that they're all that similar when you really get down to brass tacks. Now, if one is going to claim that it's inspired by another work, it's important to do so on a level beyond just surface material or appearance. Bringing up a few iconic moments or a similar genre will always come off as, for lack of a better term, a pale imitation. Now, I don't intend to say Blackbirds is bad. Obviously, I can't speak on its quality since it's not even finished. But I have personal reasons why I will not support it. However, a heavy part of its advertisement has been about it being a Berserk-inspired TTRPG. And what they're actually presenting does not match that. There's far more to the Black Swordsman than just, by all accounts, a hulking mass of iron. <laughs> In nomine Christi, amen. 